I'm Larry Walther. This is PrinciplesOfAccounting.com, Chapter 16 on the Statement of Cash Flows. And in this final module, we're going to look at using a worksheet as a tool to facilitate the preparation of the Statement of Cash Flows that we've looked at in the previous modules. Now, first of all, thinking about the structure of this worksheet, essentially it's a tool that examines the change in each balance sheet account and relates it to its effect on the Statement of Cash Flows. The upper portion of this worksheet is going to be reflective of the balance sheet. There's a column for the beginning balance sheet, there's a column for the ending balance sheet, and we'll have a debit credit column to reflect the change in those amounts. The lower portion is going to correspond to the information needed to prepare the statement of cash flows. For each change element that's identified in the upper portion of the balance sheet, we'll identify a corresponding change portion in the lower portion of the worksheet. The change in each balance sheet row is evaluated and keyed to a change in the cash flow statement. The accumulated offsets in the lower portion reflect the information necessary to prepare a statement of cash flows. And so let's look at how this is going to work. And I know this is going to be a bit hard to see in the video. There's simply too much information here to really fit comfortably onto the screen. But this corresponds exactly to the illustration that's used in the textbook. So you might want to reference that as well. But let me point out that in the 20X4 column, at the end of last year, we had $170,000 in cash. And at the end of 2000X5, we had $700,000 in cash. That's an increase in cash of $530,000. And we note that cash increases or is debited 530 to get to the ending balance. We're going to drop an offsetting credit in the lower portion of the spreadsheet reflecting the increase in cash. Obviously the amount of the increase in cash, that number is needed to complete a statement of cash flows. Let's just randomly pick another line. In this case it looks like we landed on the accounts payable line. Accounts payable increased from 200 to 270,000 during the year. We're crediting accounts payable in the balance sheet to reflect that change. That's offset in the lower portion of the spreadsheet corresponding to the cash flow statement in the debit column as an increase in accounts payable. Now, an increase in accounts payable corresponds to a positive cash flow effect. We incurred costs that we have not yet funded. So we're creating that difference between accounting income and cash flows. It's a positive effect on the cash flow, hence it's shown as a debit in that lower portion of the worksheet. Every single item in the balance sheet can be keyed to a corresponding effect in the lower portion statement of cash flows. Once the balance sheet is completely reconciled, the lower portion of the worksheet contains or includes the information that's needed to prepare the statement of cash flows. All right, so that's the model that's in use. What you need to do next is actually go to the textbook and look at that illustration and tie it out to the demonstrated statement of cash flows in the chapter. Each and every line item is indicated with a letter, item A, item B, item C, and so on. And in the book, there's a table with a corresponding explanation of why that change does what it does to help you understand this particular tool for preparing a statement of cash flows. The worksheet is optional. It's not imperative. It's not a financial statement. It's simply a tool that facilitates the process of preparing a statement of cash flows. Indeed, there are other approaches that might be used in lieu, in lieu of a worksheet to get to the statement of cash flows. But this is a very good tool, a well-organized tool that will enable that process for generating your statement of cash flows.